My name is Chris Dabul, founder of Vesper Lux. Ahlan was Ahlan from Dubai Watch Week. As we come to you from beautiful Dubai, this beautiful show organized by Ahmad Siddiqui and Sons and the Siddiqui family. Joining me is Max Buser of MBNF. Max, how are you? Great to see you. Great to see you as usual. How is the show going for you? This is, uh, in my opinion, probably the best show of the year. I don't know how you feel about it. If you're a watch lover, this is the place you should be this week. Um, What's incredible is it's gone international. Two years ago, the last edition, it was pretty much local, local collectors. This year, we're seeing people from Asia, America, Europe, uh, flying in to hang out and talk watches. A lot of um, Instagram watch guys who've basically been connecting on social media have decided Dubai Watch Week was the place they were going to finally hang out physically. And it's, <laughs> it's been, I've just spent five days talking, you can hear it from my voice, 14 hours a day to all these people coming in from everywhere. You know what's great here? There's Recep, there's Felix, there's, I mean, we're all here, all of us independents. Denis Flagellet was here yesterday, etc. So you want to meet us creators? There's no better place in the world. Yeah, and everybody's right here. Like, right here we're, we're and then just hanging out. Yeah, of each that's other. great. Yeah, great stuff. So there's a, a phenomenal new release from MBNF, but in an age where you have many brands reducing size, getting more conservative in their approach, you continue to push the boundaries and risks. And I wonder how do you go on doing that? And uh, it, it, it must be a little bit nerve wracking, probably very nerve wracking. And maybe you can touch on that a little bit. So it, it is, uh, I must admit, before the launch last week, we were still thinking, how is this going to go down in an era where everybody wants a 36 millimeter vintage looking watch? Um, and it's just basically with HM11, we've gone down back to our fundamentals. We're a horological machine creators, kinetic sculptures on the wrist. And it had been practically four years before the last real new one, which is the Bulldog. And the Bulldog came out at the beginning of COVID. We were not yet in this whole era of, uh, we were in vintage, but it was not as strong. Now, um, we're incredibly proud of having done this because we've gone also back to, well, we've never left our fundamental of not caring what the market wants. MBNF hasn't created itself going, oh, people want all black watches, or people want bronze watches, or people want this watches. We don't care about that. That's not what we are about. Wait, and don't forget one thing. Um, a piece like this takes five years. So anyway, whatever we do, if we wanted to look at what's happening in the trends, we couldn't because we never hit it right. So I'm, I'm fine with that. I actually owe HM11, and I haven't told him yet, so if he's listening, <laughs> I'm telling him, to Michael Tay. Hmm. Michael Tay, the owner of the Hourglass, who in 2018, I was launching, I don't know what, at that point in Singapore, and he sat me down and he said, you're becoming predictable. What? <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was probably one of the worst insults in my life <laughs> as a creator. And he said, yeah, you do an HM, then an LM, and an HM, and an LM, and, and it's all about your childhood or for the HMs. And I'm like, dude, you, you have to reinvent yourself. And it's true that most creators, most artists, creators, even watch guys like us, we have the, we hit that sort of 10 year mark. And I think in the first 10 years, we've said whatever we wanted to say. And then afterwards is no man's land. Yeah. And I, I thank Mike for that because there were a lot of things I didn't dare do, which started coming like the, the mad edition, which came out in 2021 was actually designed in 2014, but I kept it in the box. It's like, uh, it's too dangerous. And as far as HM11, I thought you're right. Let's forget about my childhood for a moment and let's try something else. And uh, I was on Instagram checking out, I've always been interested in architecture and I see this image of a not late 1960s crazy organic formed house. And I think that's cool. Why don't we do a watch out of that? Mm. And that's how it happens. I just want to touch base on something else, which is interesting for me because we talked about these Neo retro and retro watches, which are basically taking virtually all the, the yeah. bandwidth. And I was feeling a little bit depressed that this new generation of watchmakers, and I'm so happy that this new generation exists, 
are all coming out with more or less neo retro or retro watches. And we, between 2000 and 2005, if you think of it, between Denis Flagellet and Overk and us, but also The Freak and Richard Meal with his RM1 yeah. when it came out, which was yeah, like it was super oh, avant garde. It was last This whole contemporary yeah. watchmaking came out between 2000 and 2005. Yeah. And you see that this new wave, because there's virtually, apart from Recep, has not been a new wave. This new wave is arriving 20 years, it's a generation yeah. later. Yeah. And that these guys, like we're rock and roll and they're doing classical music. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I love classical music. But yeah. like, what's happening? And I felt a little bit depressed about this. And said, somebody looked at me one day and said, a few weeks ago, and said, you know what? All artistic trends are basically a reaction to the previous wow. one. Yep. So it yep. makes sense. It makes sense that this new generation will go back to the classics. And maybe in 2043, yeah, I wonder if, you if and we're going to see some crazy stuff. In 10, maybe 15 that generation years, will you know? go, oh, I'm fed up of all this stuff yeah. and I'm going to create something crazy again. It's been interesting psychologically for me to look at what's happening. I'm super happy that there's a new wave of, of creators because there was good two decades virtually of no new guys coming on the block. Yeah. And uh, if they want to go to retro, let them go to retro and we'll see what happens after. I'm going to ask you one question um, before I let you go. You've been doing this for 18 years, 19 years, 18 years now. How difficult is it to continue to push boundaries of creativity? It must get tiring. Like I, at some point, you've got to say like, I'm a little tired. There's a little fatigue. What keeps you going? What keeps you motivated to come out with something like this? So I've got a long answer for you on that one. Um, it's never tiring because I don't have to do it. The interesting part is that when I created MBNF, I only had HM1, which is insane. Yeah. It's insane to think that I did that. I look at back at myself going, what was wrong with you? I didn't have two, three or four in the pipeline. So this is a good idea. I've got an idea for a weird looking watch. <laughs> it's important I do yeah. it. Let's do it. Yeah. And, um, and so now, 18 years later, we've come up with 20 other concepts. Yeah. And it's just been flowing out. The creative journey has been extraordinary. And we have eight or nine calibers in the pipeline. Oh, so we're exciting. up to 2031. That's, awesome. that's great. Um, the only issue is always the waiting because like, I drew, drew this in 2018. I have to wait for 2023 for it to come out. Yeah. But I'm coming to a point in my life where I'm going to take another role is much more a mentoring role. Mm. There are still ideas coming out, but I think it's important that now I'm, I'm gonna help other people in the team to, to, to take it to the next yeah. step. Yeah. And uh, it's maybe me being 60 in three years, which is sort of clicking in my mind. And that is my next role. The next role is also, enough. we started talking about it, making sure that this company survives me and it that's one of the, 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 the reasons and the pleasure I have is of mentoring the next generation. Max, thank you so much. As usual, really a great appreciate pleasure. it. It's always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Hey guys, stay tuned for a really cool product demonstration for the HM11. Joining me is Arnaud Legeret, the communications manager for MBNF to do a really cool product demonstration on the HM11. How are you, Arnaud? Good, and Good you? to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. Take us through this this awesome horological machine that I mean I've just released. So as mentioned, that's the horological machine number eleven, the Architect, uh, which was inspired by the architecture of the late '60s, uh, when you know designers were creating those crazy houses. Uh, it was before we went to the moon, so you know they were thinking how would be the life up there and how would houses be up there, and there is one in particular that was created by a. Uh, an architect called Charles Hartling. And so this house was made of different pods. Each pod has a different utility, right? So you had the, the bathroom, the kitchen, everything was separated, isolated from each other. And all together, it made basically a house. And the idea of this watch is exactly the same. Uh, so you've got a house here with four different rooms. Each room has a different function. So as you can see here, you have the hours and minutes. Here, you have the power reserve indicator. Because it's a house, you've got a thermometer, so you can know the temperature in the house. And the last one is the first ever full sapphire crown. 
uh, because it's a house, we wanted to have windows all around. We wanted to see, you know, in the house. And so this is a sapphire crown and you can basically see the movement through the crown. The crown here is only there to set the time, but not to wind the movement. Because to wind the movement, you rotate the entire case. It's a pretty efficient winding system because when you go from one, one room to the other, basically, so with a 90 degrees rotation, you add two and a half hours to the power reserve. The full power is 96 hours, so you have four days of power reserve. Uh, you've got a flying tourbillon here in the center. It's a 42 millimeter diameter case and it's a titanium one. So you can see it's a pretty, pretty super, light. Super light, very comfortable to wear also very from compact. an ergonomic standpoint. Exactly. So one of the most compact to date uh, that we've created, um, it's really satisfying. You'll see when you start to, to play around, when you start to, you know, wind the movement, you can go both ways. So you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, just when you go clockwise, it winds the movement. The other way is more to, you know, set the different positions. You've got eight different positions. You can choose to stop on the modules like this, or you can also do it in between two modules, depending on the so you can dynamic see both. that you want so you can to see. Both. Exactly. And speaking with Max, you know, he was saying that he had originally started sketching in 2018 for, for the HM11. And these are some of the early sketches that you can see here. Exactly. Which so, eventually evolved into, into some of the, the other ones that you... So these are the sketches from Max, so as you mentioned, 2018. So all our project, they always take between four to five years to develop. Uh, we usually say about one to two years of design and then about three years to conceive the movement. And then we always work with Eric Giroud, uh, who is a designer that's been with Max since uh, day yeah. one. Uh, and you can see the, the difference in the two, two sketches. So Max is very good to have an idea and to put it on paper, but then he always needs to, to work with uh, Eric, you know, to, to go And then also for the display of time and for the window displays. So here you've got um, the ball clock from a designer called George Nelson. And that's one of the inspiration that we took for the watch because all the rooms are so deep. We wanted to have some three dimensional indexes. Three In, sure. Exactly. In architecture, you always want to have the best use of the space possible. And so these. And one, one, of, the, typically... one of the coolest things I heard about, you know, about the HM11 is that it has to be assembled inside the case. It cannot be, the movement cannot be assembled outside. Absolutely. And then be brought in. So yeah. these are just some of the images here. So as you can see here, usually the, the watchmaker, so he works on the main plate first, then he put it in the case, and then one by one, you add all the different modules. You finish the assembly, as you mentioned, in the case, because when it's fully assembled, it doesn't fit in this crazy yeah. shape. You have 92 components in the case, uh, so it's a very complex case. We had to develop 19 different gaskets for this watch. Incredible. Uh, to give you an idea, in my LM101, I have six gaskets. In this one, you have 19. Just in the crown, you have eight gaskets. And that's typically one of the gaskets that we had to develop for this watch. So it's a very three-dimensional yeah. gasket. And there are many very interesting details when you get to see this one. Here is a good example of uh, conical gearings that you have in a watch to have those 90 degrees indication. Um, that's something that we master now. We've used it on previous machines and that's typically something if we didn't do it on previous machine, the, the conception of this movement would have taken much, much longer. Um, There's just so many layers on this watch. It's truly incredible. They're in a, in a time where we sometimes complain about lack of originality or lack of creativity in the watch industry. Absolutely. Um, MBNF and, and, and what you guys are doing. Uh, continues to push the limits and push the boundaries. So, especially when you know that that's our 21st caliber. So, Max is just in another world, like 21 caliber, and he's managed to to do something which doesn't look anything like any of the previous machines. So, yeah, we are. Well, congratulations to you guys. Thank, thank you for you thank you for much. the time. It's really appreciated. Pleasure. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal creation. Arno, thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us, guys. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos from Dubai Watch Week. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more upcoming content. Take care.